What is the church? What is the purpose of the church? Welcome back to the Identity in Christ devotion as we are working our way through the book of Ephesians. My name is Aaron Bublitz. I serve as pastor at Heritage Lutheran Church in Gilbert, Arizona. And it's my privilege to spend just a few minutes in God's word with you again today. Uh, We are in Ephesians chapter 2. Today we're reading verses 19 through 22. Paul writes, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, in Christ, The whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, in Christ, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God, which God lives by his spirit. So what is the church? What is the purpose of the church? This wonderful little section from Ephesians chapter 2 helps us answer those important questions. The church is not a building. The church is, is not a, a physical thing. Now, we can call our, our, our church where we go for Sunday worship or Bible studies or fellowship. That is our church, that building there. But really, the church is people. Uh, the Bible never uses the word church to describe to a building. It's always, a, a, it's always people. It's believers. It is believers in Jesus Christ. That is what the church is. That is what we confess in the Apostles' Creed, the Holy Christian Church. That is all believers of all time, believers in Jesus Christ as our Savior. And then there's visible churches. There's there's churches where we see people gathered together around word and sacrament. That there is the church too. Again, it's not about the building. It's about the people who are gathered there in God's word. And so that church is described here that we are no longer foreigners and strangers, right? We're not outcasts. We're not, we're not those with, who don't have a place to belong, who don't have a, a place to call home, right? But now instead, what we were, again, we were separated from God, but now we are fellow citizens with God's people. We are part of God's holy nation. We are part of God's people. Right? Fellow citizens with others, other believers, and members of God's household, it says. Right? So we are part of his household. We, we have access to, to the fridge. It's a place to sleep. It's a place where you can kick off your shoes and feel comfortable and just spread out on the couch. It's a place where it's home right? that you look forward to going to, where you feel most comfortable. That is the church along with your fellow believers. And then there's this description of, of, again, figuratively, how this, what this church is built on. It's built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, and that is the word of God, right? The apostles and the prophets are the ones who God inspired uh, to, to write down those scriptures. The foundation of the church, the foundation of everything we do as the church, as believers, is the word of God. From Genesis to Revelation, his inspired, revealed word to us is the foundation of everything we do. And the chief cornerstone of that foundation is Jesus Christ himself. Right? The, the cornerstone in, in ancient building was really important. Uh, that, that cornerstone, which has just become you know, commemorative and, and you know, just a display piece for us today, um, that, that cornerstone you know, thousands of years ago had to be laid straight because everything else was built off of that. It was the most important stone laid. And that is Jesus. The Bible is full of wonderful things for us. But most importantly, the main message of the Bible, the purpose of the Bible is to reveal a Savior. Old Testament, a Savior promised. New Testament, a Savior who has come. But Jesus Christ himself is the cornerstone of the Word of God, the the heart of the Word of God. He is the Word of God in flesh who lived and died and rose and and, and won our salvation for us, who did everything so that we could be members of that household of God and be citizens of, of, of God with God's people, that we could be brought into that church. Jesus Christ himself is the cornerstone on which the church is built. And then it says in Christ, that building is joined together, right? We are united to one another, as we heard in our section from yesterday. The the, the work of Christ unites us as one, brings us into fellowship together and peace together. And that building rises to become this holy temple in the Lord. 
Right? It rises to the praise and glory of God as we gather together as the church to, to, to grow in these truths and, and to encourage one another in these truths and to worship our God, that, that holy temple that we gather, spiritually speaking, uh, as the church. And it says, in him, you too, you Gentiles, and you who are still coming to faith, you are being built together to become a dwelling. You see that the building of this church will never end until, until Jesus comes back to take that holy Christian church, to gather the whole entire Christian church together in heaven with him before the throne of God. But until then, that church is growing as more are brought to hear that gospel, as more are brought in and, and built into that church, that, that, that building continues that where God lives by his spirit as we continue to spread the gospel, as we continue to grow in our faith and be strengthened in our faith, that, that building is growing stronger and bigger. And that's, what, that's who we are. That is what the church is, and that's what our purpose is. We are the Holy Christian Church. We are believers gathered around word and sacrament, gathered around that gospel of Jesus Christ, built on that foundation of the word and Jesus himself as that chief cornerstone. And our purpose is to, to help this church continue to grow that the Holy Christian Church might spread to more people, that, that more people would be brought into this building of the church, this dwelling of God, but also as we grow in our faith and we are strengthened in these truths of Jesus Christ and what he's done for us, that that temple continues to grow, that, 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 that uh, dwelling in which God dwells by his spirit continues to grow within us and among us. Let's thank God for that. Lord God, we thank and praise you that you have taken us foreigners and strangers by nature and you have made us citizens of, uh, of, your, uh, of your nation. Uh, of, you have made us uh, members of your household as you have called us to faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior. You have called us into the Holy Christian Church and uh, we want to continue to build on that foundation of the Word of God, to continue to, to grow in that, those truths of the gospel of Jesus Christ and all that he's done for us. We want our faith to be strengthened and, and for all of, all of our efforts as the Holy Christian Church to, to be for your praise and glory, but that also we want to take this gospel and share it with others. That's our purpose. We want to grow ourselves, but we want to be able to grow your church through your promised Holy Spirit that works through the word and sacrament, that more might be brought to know you as their God, and that they too might be gathered with us someday into that holy Christian church, uh, all gathered together before your throne someday. Until then, keep us safe and continue to help us carry out the work you've given us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wonderful again to be with you here. Uh, may God bless your day, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.